Um, we are still in our Goldilocks era. Yeah, we have another <laughs> table. What are your guys' thoughts? Please let us know. We can't decide. For those who maybe just listen on Spotify or um, in the car and you're not watching us, we have gone through three, four. This is our fourth I think we've had set. a different setup each episode. Have we had yeah. the same setup so two episodes? So for a while, we had, we had the couch for a couple episodes. I thought we had it for... Oh, I wasn't here the two. second episode. Yeah, two episodes. And okay. then we, I think we had the big table for one episode. The very small table for one episode, yep. which Ian so eloquently, eloquently told us, it's just too small. I'm too close to you guys. <laughs> and now this one is a slightly larger I one. I like this one. I like the chair. Yeah. Um, we will be in our Goldilocks era until further notice. <laughs> it's fine by me. And you know what? One day, maybe. This one's too big. This one's too small. This one's just right. Get a right. sponsored set. <laughs> you know what? If What is it? Um, What's that one? Haberschmitt's? No. H- Haverty's? Yeah. Just down the street. Yeah, you know Haverty's? If you got a table and some chairs. Is that a furniture store? Yeah, I think oh, it's like okay. a sales thing because I've never oh. heard of it until I moved here. I but, see. Um, we do have, this is not a drill, Woj is retiring written on our, uh, our run down here. Yeah. We do. I don't know where Out else of to get. Out of Yeah, truly. Yeah. Because, first of all, I didn't realize he was that old. How old is he? Well, he's, he's in his 50s. Yeah, but he's been. Yeah, he's 55. Someone said he'd been, he'd been doing this for like 31 30 years. 30 something or 30 years, years. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, I you so figure, I mean. But I guess he's 20 when he does it. it. Yeah, I mean, we were in our 20s. Did Twitter so exist back then? It, no. You'd be surprised okay. how fast uh, 25, 30 years goes by and all of a sudden. But, uh, yeah, St. Bonaventure was where he graduated from. Actually, we had a reporter at another station in our area that went to St. Bonaventure, and that was Ooh. his thing. I'm like, oh, anyone cool? He's like, oh, Woj. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So, so he'll be going back back there to his community and uh, working as like a general manager with their athletic department. Mm-hmm. And uh, cool. so, yeah, be cool for them. I've heard nothing but good things on ESPN today. Adam Schefter talked about some cool things. Uh, I guess all the insiders like Adam and then you had uh, Jeff Passan, mm-hmm. the MLB, mm-hmm. and then uh, you had uh, Pete Thamel with the college football NFL yep. insider. And then uh, I guess they all went to a Springsteen concert together so so i guess they kind of already knew but it was cool it was like a really cool uh uh you know moment for them talking and pete thamel shared a funny uh story where he was at a red Sox game and uh they had just gotten like some nba breaking news or whatever and woge in the middle of like getting ready to get his condiments for his hot dog like he just looks at he's like pete how do you spell this? <laughs> it was like this crazy like <laughs> name. Like I forget exactly which player it was, but it was like one of those crazy foreign names mm-hmm. and stuff. And he's like, uh, B A C A I. So <laughs> like just the pressure is on right there. So it's been cool to hear, uh, well, you know, all the different stories that they shared on ESPN today. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, we all kind of have those similar dreams. He said he always wanted to work at ESPN. Mm-hmm. He did that. And now he gets to, continue in a different role looks to spend more time with his family and stuff so so yeah cool i think all of us kind of had that dream too of like oh i want to work for espn one day or Mm -hmm. facts um, i'm trying to think of other stations like for me growing up canadian i was like oh i always want to work for tsn um which is the sports network in case anyone's curious um (laughs) and just you're right like he had 31 years of working to live his dream and he got to do it now he gets to just like choose a different dream and that's that's awesome. Um, funny that you were saying that that sports reporter, that's his claim to fame. He's like, oh, I went to college where mm-hmm. Woj went to college. Um, where, <laughs> what is your claim to fame for your college? Who, who went to your college? Oh, we have everyone. Everyone went to Kent State. Nick Saban went to Kent State. Oh. Um, Julian Edelman went to Kent State. Um, yeah, Antonio, Antonio yeah. Gates, he'll yeah. be up for the uh, Hall of Fame here. Um, James Harrison, who was the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, defensive lineman. Um, I'm trying to think. We have a lot of people. Drew Carey went to Kent State. Drew Carey, like yeah, Wheel of Fortune Car- <laughs> Drew Carey? Uh, Not Price Wheel of Fortune. Right. Price is right. Price is sorry, right. sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I was actually Steve thinking Harvey. of the Drew Carey show, show. Steve Harvey went to Kent State. Arsenio what? Hall went to Kent That's State. To now, those three That's I don't actually think finished. <laughs> but, yeah, we have quite a few. I mean, you look up the Kent State roster. I mean, it's... 
Ian Klein went to Kent State. <laughs> Ian Klein. Wow. I was waiting for you to say that. Uh, I didn't want to bother asking uh, you. Yeah, because, because Syracuse kind of uh, builds broadcasters and ESPN people. Like Jeff Passan went to Syracuse, Mike Tirico, Bob Costas, Beth Moens, Ian Eagle, Noah Eagle, Drew Carter. That's just a few. Me, Tegan Brown. Yeah. Tegan Brown. Well, well, went to Syracuse. Allison Kanuha went to the University of North Dakota. But there is one that I always throw out. Phil Jackson. Nice. He played basketball at UND, went to UND. I believe graduated from UND. So yeah. that's like my as like far one. As, we know. as far as we know, that is like my claim to fame is like, hey, <laughs> Phil Jackson. Um, I can't think of anybody else like off the top of my head. I mean, UND uh, breeds a lot of hockey players. Right. So like you look at the NHL, like today actually, um, TJ Oshie plays for the Caps. Uh, just announced that he would be on like the long term IR because of like back pain. Um, he's a UND grad. Yeah. I mean, it's, you can go down the list. It's always fun. Brian Winhorse, another ESPN. NBA insider, he was Kent State, Lou Holtz, legendary Notre Dame head coach. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. If you're a Browns fan, Josh Cribbs was well-known. He played quarterback and then ended up being, like, a really good uh, punt returner for the Browns, which we're seeing now in the NFL with the new dynamic kickoff rule. I'm tired of them. Just call yeah. it the kickoff, you know? It's like, yeah. why does it have to be that dynamic kickoff? Because yeah, they have to, to bring you in. And they have to explain it every single mm-hmm. time of, like, this yeah. is new. It's like, all right, my guy, we've we've been yeah. talking about this. It's growing this on me, though. Now. Like, it's fun it's to actually thing. see, yeah. you know, punt returns come back into the game and yeah. kickoff returns and stuff like that. So I've, I've enjoyed it. Hasn't taken away from the game. No. Yeah, that's fair. Well, congratulations, Woj, on retiring and stepping into Ooh. your new role. But <laughs> we got other things to talk about. CCU football. I'm looking at Tegan because last time uh, you were in uh, Temple for the last game. I was. I got not to in Temple, not in, in Temple Philly. in Philly. Uh, yeah, I got to go to Philly for that game, and it's cool because the Owls play at the Eagles Stadium, Lincoln Financial Field, um, which is definitely an older NFL stadium. But it was cool to be inside, see all the Eagles stuff. You know, they tried to cover it up with all the Temple logos, but you can only do so much. It was uh, because it's built as an NFL stadium. Going to a Temple versus coastal game it looked very empty oh, in there but yeah i mean the shots that they, they came out with the win they're three and oh but uh that fourth quarter looked uh messy fourth and third quarter really was where it all started because temple somehow almost came back so that could have been bad but it was a good game overall can yeah. i just say that it's underrated to be an owl as a mascot because like people probably yeah. think like oh you're an owl like those are scary creatures well yeah. you can literally call so many games that coastal does like the battle of the beaks or the battle of the birds <laughs> or because i mean week one they played the game cocks at jack state so battle of the beaks and then all of a sudden they play the owls it's like all right i can't use this like every single time i can only yeah. use it so many times i don't think we play any other bird teams this season there are a lot of bird teams though because you got eagles you got the golden Golden eagles you've got golden eagles oh no there's eagles and the golden eagles in college football yeah but um yeah now there are three you know Mm -hmm. they beat jack state then william and mary and then temple and now they're getting ready for virginia which coastal was supposed to play virginia back in 2022 but Mm -hmm. that game got canceled Mm -hmm. so this will be the first time that they're playing each other and virginia is the three-point favorite right now but coastal was the underdog in week one against jack state too and then beat them 55 to 27 so yeah be an interesting test for them so uh, but Coastal's looked good for the most part. I think I think the fourth quarter, they just kind of let their foot off the gas. I think they had a decent lead and slowly just kind of let let things slip. But at the end of the day, win is a win. Um, Coach Beck kind of talked about the fact of getting in that kind of a closer battle towards the end as good as you get closer into conference play. Because, yep. as he said, he does not foresee many um, blowouts once they get into Sunbelt play. So. Yeah. I'll be here before you know it. I think we open up with Old Dominion. Yep, Old Dominion. We play uh, Virginia this weekend, and then they'll get a bye week, which will be nice. I think mm-hmm. it's at a good point in the season yeah. for them, whereas like Clemson's was pretty early because they just had yeah. their bye week. But then Coastal will play ODU at home, and that was a really tough battle for them mm-hmm. last year on the road. They came back from a 20-something point deficit in that yeah. third quarter. So yeah. Old Dominion even played the Gamecocks pretty close in that mm-hmm. first game. Yeah. So. So we'll see uh, see what they have to offer, and I think they were actually one of the teams that played in the Myrtle Beach Bowl not too long ago. I think um, so. I think two or three years ago. Yeah. Right? So I think they were up in there because I remember talking with their coach at yeah. the time, and and so they'll be coming back to a place where where they've had success in the past. So 
Yeah. yeah. But we were also talking about uh, injuries to CCU. Yeah. Kind of struggle, a little bit of struggle. I mean, not necessarily because obviously you look at the teams that they've played and the wins that they've had, and mm-hmm. it doesn't look like they're struggling, but yeah. it could be an issue against UVA. Yeah, I mean, Braden Bennett got hurt in the William & Mary game, and after that game, Coach Beck said that he could have been brought in, but they kept him out as a precaution, but then he was out against Temple, and in Beck's conference today or Wednesday, for those of you who listen on Friday when this comes out, he said that he will not be playing this weekend and that it's day-to-day, week-to-week with him. But, I mean, even even without Bennett, the shots are running the ball pretty much the entire time as it is. I think – I can't remember the exact number, but they're, they're running the ball more than anything else. Virginia, on the other hand, they're more of a passing game. I mean, their quarterback has thrown 901 – like passing yards so far this season in the first three games alone. So it'll be interesting to see how Coastal's defense responds to that, especially because their QB has thrown four interceptions in the last two games when they played uh, Wake Forest and Maryland, and Virginia just lost to Maryland. Yeah. It was a good game. Yeah. Um, You know, I think overall I think it just comes down to game plan and execution you know I mean injuries are part of the game at the end of the day so it's next man up and with a roster like Coastal has that's kind of the name of the game this season because you don't exactly know who that next person is that you're plugging in you know we've got so many new faces on the team Um, but thus far to have so many new faces I think we said at the beginning of the season over 60 new players 66 yeah they've gelled well together Mm -hmm. for their first three games um, so this will be an interesting test, you know, I mean, think win or lose, you know, going up against a team like Virginia, you know, it'll be a good measuring stick, um, you know, but I mean, even from the national perspective, these bigger name schools know that the Sun Belt is not a conference you want to mess around with. So, um, so that'll be interesting to see how this game um, it ends up coming out, and it seemed like they had a really nice turnout for the home opener. The crowd really yeah, well, it was the, fans it was the came fourth out. biggest crowd in program history for William and Mary. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. Because, <laughs> I'm laughing because I went to the game with you, and it was my yes, first coastal game. It was, and it was huge. It was mm-hmm. gigantic, and I mean, it was crazy cool because they had so many new traditions like it was a new entrance with motorcycles and fire and apparently there's there was supposed to be teal smoke i didn't see teal so i'm hoping i saw to smoke see it. I saw there smoke. was a lot of smoke i did smoke. not see teal smoke but that's okay i Maybe was concerned this about that because there's yeah. players walking through because you have the pyrotechnics mm-hmm. yep and there's players walking through and then by the like, time the last player comes through it's just covered in smoke i was like that can't be good for his lungs <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, but continue sorry yeah, i interrupted yeah, yeah. you I was so no no so you're concerned. you're fine yeah allison and i both got to go to that game it was fun but so this game the virginia game is already sold out for the general public it's been sold out for what a week a little bit more probably last i checked there were still student tickets available but it's going to be packed and honestly i think there'll be a bunch of virginia fans because Mm -hmm. the acc fans tend to travel just as a conference as it is so well it's nice to see the the stadium filled because they did that huge expansion they added that second level uh, a few years ago especially mainly um, not only for their fans but in order to host the Myrtle Beach Bowl you have to have so much with capacity and at the time I remember Jamie Chadwell when he took over he's like you know I really can see us filling this place out and at the time everyone's like good luck man and he ended (laughs) up you know building something and I think I mean there's been a seamless transition between him and coach Beck they have a very similar mentality in terms of the professionalism, in terms of getting the fans out there. And, you know, Coastal had a really good following, you know, as they came in originally, had some early on success at the lower level. Now they come up and they're playing with the bigger names, kind of had to reestablish themselves a little bit. But, I mean, especially if you're winning, that puts more fans, especially the students, Mm -hmm. they want to see, you know, not just that first game, but if they're a competitive team, they want to be out there. So, um, So, yeah, we'll see if Coastal keeps on winning and, keeping the fans excited, keeping the fans entertained, and hopefully keep, you know, Brooks Stadium packed. So, yeah. Because it's a cool thing when you see. It's fun when you're playing in front of fans. No one just wants to sp- – and stay for the whole game. Nothing drives yeah, me nuts. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. You yeah. know, stay for the whole game, yeah. especially the students. At the students That's ex- yeah. It's the students who, like – and especially because they're in such a – obvious area right like mm-hmm. it's a huge They're section right in the end zone yeah, yeah so and they expanded the student section mm-hmm. this year it's not just that tiny little side on the right anymore yeah. it is the entire end zone yeah 
That's and cool. When we got there, there were, there were students like lined up trying yes. to get into the and it was still full. But then I think when it, with a game like William and Mary, when you're winning by so much, yeah, it's not going to be like some weird sneak attack comeback. And they're they're tired from partying yeah. all day. Well, <laughs> so. keep partying. You can take yeah. that break. You're young, like I said. Yeah, they, yeah. they could for sure rebound at, what, 20, 21? Pretty much. But. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It's been a long time since I was in college. Jeez. But you were saying that Beck was – he says that this so far this season the record is not a surprise. Yeah, I mean, so obviously the beginning of the season, Coastal went into that Jack State game as the underdog. A lot of people thought, oh, there are a lot of new people. They're really not going to do as well this year as they did last year. But Coach Beck in his press conference earlier was like, you know what? My guys thought we were going to do just fine. If you probably asked our guys at the beginning of the year, did you feel like we could be 3-0 and going in this game? Most of them probably said they would. So or where we should be probably, you know what I mean, at the end of the day. So we knew there would be tough battles. No, certainly there's no disrespect to any of the programs, right? Most most teams have goals of winning conference championships or whatever it might be, go to the playoffs, undefeated season, whatever it is. But um, our guys have done, a, have done a good job just trying to continue to focus on the process every day. Also coming off a very exciting weekend was – Gamecocks. He had game day, college game day in town. I think it was the first time they were in Columbia in over 10 years. Yeah, um, since 2014. Long so time. it was a lot of fun. Darius was there. Coach Don Staley was the guest picker. Uh, I think a lot of people really enjoyed themselves. And uh, we had some people here at WMBF, the Alan Marcus. <laughs> well, Gamecocks fan. He literally <laughs> did our high school football show, which ended, you know, at 1130. He probably drives home to Georgetown, which is almost an hour yeah. away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he probably didn't get home till I don't know, 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And before you know it, he was in Columbia by 6 a.m. Yeah. Uh, before the sun even got up. I don't know if he slept. Like, if I'm being totally honest, I, think he, I think he went home, no. picked up, because I don't think he goes by himself. I think he goes with maybe his brother or somebody. Because yeah, I think he does go with his brother, because he went to UCLA with his brother last year. Oh, yeah. right, because yeah. you were there and he was mm-hmm. there. Um, mm-hmm. But no, he. I remember seeing that message when I or that Snapchat when I woke up, um, and it was just like bright and early, like six a.m. Yeah. maybe. Yeah, they said there were people out there between like four thirty, five oh, yeah. o'clock in I'm the morning sure. that were already getting ready for game day, which doesn't even start until nine. Right. Um, but it had a great feel. Uh, Coach Beamer was out there. He got the fans excited. Um, there was a lot of people that I think were feeling the energy that the Gamecocks were bringing. And I, I had the chance, I watched that game from beginning to end. And Lenore Sellers, I mean, he looked legit. He had a great first half. Um, they had a 75 yard rushing touchdown to the house. He kind of threw it off, threw me off a little bit because he took the glasses off and he put oh. on, he had contacts. <laughs> And everyone was like saying Clark Kent turning into Superman. <laughs> and uh, so it did throw me off a little bit. Um, but then he tweaked his ankle right before halftime. I think there was like 10 seconds left in the yeah. half. And uh, it sounds like it's an ankle sprain. He tried to come back in the third, but just not not enough uh, to, to will them. And the refs, I mean, I'm not one to say the refs dictate a game, but there were some very, very, very questionable calls in that second half as uh, LSU just made their way back. Um, Unfortunately, you know, they had they had an opportunity uh, with a field goal to tie it. It just hooks over to the left a little bit, Um, but it was a good game overall. Um, And Coach Beamer, he said, you know, hey, we still have an entire season in front of us. You know, you can't sit there and be sad of what happened. They now get ready for Akron, um, who they will play at 7:30 under the lights, so uh, yep. you know it'll be a good rebound game, and uh, hopefully get them back on track. But you know, I feel like if Lenore Sellers stays in that game, then you're talking uh, South Carolina, probably cracking the top 25, I would guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, Beamer said yesterday in his press conference that Lenore's told him that he'll be good to go this weekend, mm-hmm. so. Theoretically, we should see him back out there starting, but Beamer talked about their QB room. You know, he's confident with his guys. I think Robbie uh, is the backup QB. Yeah, yep. Uh, So they feel confident with him, but Lenore should be back out there this week. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely see a change in the game when Ashford came in. Um, Lenore just brings in it from both sides. He can throw it and he can run. 
you know, and, and but once he lost the ability to run in that second half, yep. you knew what he was going to do. And then when you saw Ashford came in, then, well, he was mostly a run first guy and the passing game wasn't quite there. But I mean, I give him credit. He kept them in as long as they could. Um, but I think we talked penalties in this one. I mean, at the end of the day, they were just shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah. Again, I think there were a lot of calls that were questionable to to most people, but you know, come back, you know, reset, refocus, and then but then you look on the other side, you know, they played they blew out Kentucky. <laughs> well, what did Kentucky do? They went toe to toe with Georgia this past week, the number one team in the country at the time. So it just makes you realize I think, you know, this South Carolina team has what they need and I think for a long time they've been searching for that quarterback and being able to watch Sellers in high school and see him transition to college I can tell most Gamecock fans I think you have your quarterback for the next you know two to three years and you'll have a real opportunity just protect him with an O-line and get him some talented receivers around the corner and I think the Gamecocks have the right coach in place the right you know mentality in place and we'll see how they go with the rest of the season. Yeah, no, for sure. He honestly covered everything that I was going to say yeah. in a lovely little bow. Hmm. Um, I was, all I think I was going to add to that was that um, B. Marhead even mentioned you were talking like, oh, well, you're looking at Georgia, who absolutely destroyed Clemson and then gets puts a close game against mm -hmm. um, Kentucky. Kentucky and Kentucky getting beat. Like, it's just kind of like a we're looking at next week's game when – the Gamecocks were playing Akron. 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 Mm -hmm. Akron. Akron. I, I, I knew as soon as I said it, I was like, oh, that was wrong. It felt wrong. Um, and he even said in Oppressor, like, this is not, like, something that we're just going to let up on. Like, yeah. they may be going, what, one and two so far this season, but we have to play just as if they were playing anybody else that would be ranked above them. Yeah. I mean, Akron played Ohio State earlier this year. And, you know, I mean, that first quarter – I mean, Akron was playing pretty well, you know, against Ohio State. So uh, it should be a game that I think the Gamecocks walk away with, but we'll see. Um, and then they got, they'll got they get ready for the rest of the SEC, and, and we'll see how this plays out, especially with the expanded playoff. You know, having that close game against LSU is something to keep in your back pocket. And, uh, you know, hopefully if they can continue to focus on each game that's in front of them, you know, hopefully maybe get a little bit, bit of revenge in the SEC championship game. Yeah. yeah, I mean other South Carolina teams that we're looking at, Clemson. Talk Good about an absolute Clemson. rebound from the prior games. Um, what was it, sixty six twenty against App State? Yeah, yeah. coming off a of bye, so they didn't play last yes. week. Nope. But uh, yeah, their last game was against App State, a uh, Sun Belt team, and but yeah. the team we thought that would have maybe been more competitive. Yeah, well, I think I think Coach uh, like Dabo Sweeney was really worried about about playing App State. That press conference that he did, you know, before they played, he just kept saying, like, you know what, we're really going to struggle against this team. We know that. We know that they were really good last year. We know that they're really good now. We're not discounting them just because they're a Sun Belt team. And then, bam, Clemson just yeah. goes in and crushes them. So... And then, yeah. yeah, Clemson has an ACC matchup this week. They're playing NC State where Grayson McCall will not be on the field this week. He's day-to-day -day with an injury, which he seems to face year after year I was gonna say, in this. Like, so, like, like the same I was not surprised again. Yeah, all. I mean, I'm not surprised to hear that he's injured. Yeah. But, I mean, at the same time, you kind of, you know, you don't want to question the injury. But, I mean – right. I would question after how he played against Tennessee. I mean, that game was bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about – and I think it just does show you that difference between Sun Belt and the SEC. And, uh, yeah, Grayson McCall got a rude awakening. I mean, there was a one point where it looked like they were going to kind of be up there and at least get on the board. And he gets picked in the end zone, and that sucker goes back <laughs> all the And yeah. that was pretty much – he just looked shocked. I mean, they, every time they, you know, did a shot at him on the on you know TV, he just looked like it was just such a faster paced game. And uh, we'll we'll see. I mean, NC State they're also coming off a bye week, um, so this could be an interesting game, especially in the first first half. You know, as they kind of try to get back into to game mode, it's like I, I'm not a big fan of those early bye weeks. Ohio State was on an early bye, and you know your week 
week three and you're just like, oh, where's my team? It's like, oh, yeah. they're it's off like this week. Syracuse is on a bye this week. I'm like, this is too early in the yeah. year. I've yeah. always associated bye weeks with like rest weeks, right? So like mm-hmm. you play, like, I mean, that's essentially what it is, but like you play enough games, you're like, okay, you deserve it. Take the yeah. rest. Taking a rest after That's one game. Hope. Yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like it's a waste of It's week. like Clemson was yeah. one and one, and it's like, ah, let's take a break. Yeah. We put in a lot of work. We're doing good. We're just going to – we're not going to play this week. It's okay. Well, there's not really a preseason in college, and then so I think this yeah. kind of, in a way, for mm-hmm. some teams, it is a preseason. Get a little bit – two two games of a tune-up, come back, and then get involved with, uh, you know, once you get involved in the Big Ten, the SEC, and then you get ready in conference play. Uh, and so there's a lot of changes. I know, like, with the Big Ten this year, rather than having the two divisions, it'll be the two teams that finish at the top of the entire conference itself. You know, so that would be an interesting one. You know, a lot of people were afraid with that if you'd have Ohio State and Michigan playing uh, at the end of the season. <laughs> yeah. Well, then what if they end up being, you know, at the top with, you know, of the Big Ten, then you have to play again. And then when originally there was the four-team playoff, they're like, well, you could have Ohio State-Michigan <laughs> In three straight games, you know, so. Which would uh, be entertaining. Let's not, Oh, like, absolutely. Like, funny. that's yeah. a game that, I yeah. mean, it would be sold out. So, giving people the chance to see it at least yeah. three times, I would do it. And it's a series, something you don't normally get to yeah. see, nope. you know, in, in, in football. In football. It's, you get yeah, one it shot and exist. you're done. So, so, we'll see how that ends up working. But, but yeah, Clemson taking on NC State. Um, and we'll see what the Tigers can do. I'm not completely convinced yet with App State. I don't think no. I'll be completely convinced with NC State either. Um, but, again, the ACC, though, they're in shambles. I mean, the Florida State, <laughs> I think first team, they said, in a long, long time to be in the preseason top ten, starting 0-3. And, 0 and so, yeah. Um, yeah, as far as the ACC goes, we'll see what comes out of it. But Syracuse will come out on top. I mean, right. honestly, McCord I'm, looks good for real, because yeah. like I said, I don't know if He's it's just He's already broken like two school records. Man's yeah. been there for a month. I don't know if it's just lesser talent in the ACC, <laughs> but he didn't Well, do you just ja- mentioned Florida he, State struggle. He could not do anywhere near what he's doing <laughs> now at Ohio State and then he had more receiving, you know, he more talent than freaking Marvin Harrison Jr. And uh, so, but yeah, I mean, you also look at the, you know, situation kind of with the NFL, and now you're seeing Bryce Young get benched. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, someone who was a former Browns and Panthers quarterback, which was Baker Mayfield, yep. was talking today. You just have to find that right system. He said, you know, it didn't work out for him in Carolina either. You know, he had a short stint with the Rams. He finds a team like Tampa Bay, and now it starts working out. And then you look even at um, – you know, the Vikings, Sam Darnold. Everyone said, oh, he's trash. He goes around the league. If he, also another Carolina Panther. Yep. So at what yeah. point, at what point hmm, David Pepper, do you yeah. look in the like, mirror and you realize, yep. oh, that, it's, oh, it's not I'm you. I'm the it's, problem. Yeah, ex- it's me. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's so. you that wants to get us copyrighted this week. <laughs> what? No, no. I was said that was not a song. That was just uh, – That was just her statement. I made it up. up. I made it up. That's Dean Brown quote. Yeah, I think McCord may have found what he needed, you know. I think yeah. this might be the system where – you know, a little less pressure than yeah. being at Ohio State. You come to Syracuse and, you know, you go 500. That's solid for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so so we'll see. I mean, but, yeah. yeah, he looks legit. So good for y'all. Thanks. Meanwhile, Kent State sucks. <laughs> <laughs> good Lord. Hey, Tennessee could have put 150 points on us this past week. Up 30 nothing, and they did an onside kick. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. So yeah, everyone was saying, like, I guess they were offered to keep the clock running or whatever. Oh, my oh, gosh. I, I, I think I saw that. Yeah. Matt Bullock sent me the gif from, uh, <laughs> the gif. from uh, South Park where he's like, I didn't hear no dang bell. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's like, yeah, Kent State, good Lord. At least show up and show out. But, yeah. Try. I, please try. Yeah, they had, gosh, sheesh, that game was just out of hand. Really, I mean, Tennessee could have easily put up 150 points on us if they wanted to. But what they decided – I think it was like 70 nothing, oh, and I think they only scored three po- – I think Tennessee only scored three points in the second half. I think they put almost like 65-plus points on us in the first half alone. Oh, no. It was wild. Dang. Yeah. So, it's like you almost were watching just to see, like, how bad it would get. Right. Because yeah, they- you're witnessing history. Not good history, but you're witnessing history. Yeah, I mean, they pulled, they pulled I think, their entire – I think they had, like, nothing but walk-ons in the second half <laughs> by that time, but – yeah, Kent State, good Lord. With as much 
football history as they have. You think they get it together, but who they play this week? Do you know? I don't. I'm not even looking anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this season's tanked. Well, it's I'm over. sure that she would allow you to jump on the wagon and be a Syracuse fan. No, nah, like. I got Go the orange. Buckeyes. Oh, we got the Buckeyes. Right. We'll be good. Yeah, yeah. He does have fine. Ohio State, who we stole his quarterback. Well, there you go. Yeah, we so. borrowed him. We, we until he decides to go somewhere else that's paying better. Well, I think is this his last year of eligibility? I think so. oh, right? Yeah. I Just think kidding. so. You know what, Syracuse, as long as they can have like one really good year in my 20s I'll, I'll take it because yeah it's like every every year that I was at Syracuse they always started the season like five and oh and like yes we're doing this and then all of a sudden we would play Clemson two years in a row in week six and we lost two years in a row and I was like really and then I had to come down here and start talking about Clemson so well, it's yeah. funny because Lenore Sellers was originally going to go to Syracuse. Yes, yeah, was, I remember this. Yeah, his, yep. uh, head, the head coach, I don't know if it's still the same head coach. No, it's um, it's uh, Fran Brown now. Yeah, but, it, but your uh, former head Dino coach Babers. was actually in um, yep. South Florence to watch Sellers Dang. play. And so got to meet him on the sideline at one of his games. Yep. And it looked like he was going to go. And literally last minute, Carolina yeah. snuck in there, offered him a scholarship, and boom. It's closer I remember though. talking all about that. And that was before <laughs> I even knew that I would take this job. And then all of a sudden I come here and I got to talk about him anyway. So yeah, there, there you go. go. Do you know oh, who else out? is also having a great season? Still in high school. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, yeah. I, this isn't going to the Panthers, so. There's no, why would I? You know who's having a good season? The, the Panthers. Panthers. No, they're not. Oh, yeah. High school football. High school I mean, football. We got, yeah. It's really been fun. Lorts looks yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, their defense. I was at that game last week. Good lord. Yeah. It was it was good. I mean, the Chiefs tried. They did. They they genuinely tried, and they honestly looked pretty good, like in the second half. Mm -hmm. But Loris is is fast. They're unstoppable as soon as they get going. Like. Yeah. Mm -mm. And I was just looking at the schedule. So right now, Dylan and Loris are undefeated. They'll right. play in about two or three weeks here. So that'll be interesting. Wow. And that and the region that they're in, the top three teams are undefeated. Mm -hmm. Then you have Ainer at three and one. And then at the bottom you have North Myrtle Beach sitting there. But hey, all you gotta do is win in your region. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. Uh, the beginning of the season doesn't matter. You could yeah. lose every single game, and then as soon as region play starts, that's what counts. Yep. Dylan is our game of the week. It is Dylan, Dylan Hartsville. Yeah. So that'll be a really fun one. Uh, what is Hartsville is what is one, 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 and one, one and one. <laughs> okay, I thought so. I was like, is that the one with the lightning delay? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think Dylan is. Once again, going to stay undefeated. So, but that's yeah, I mean, we'll it. see. I mean, Hartsville, they're a very tough team. They know how to put up points. They play different at home. There's something about being at Kellytown Stadium. Um, it's just got a fun atmosphere around it. There's some bad blood between both of the teams yeah. that goes back. I mean, they're very, they're fairly close to each other. Um, and so I think there's a really good opportunity for a good game there. Thus far, uh, picking game of the week, <laughs> we haven't been doing so hot. I mean, the matchup on paper looks real good. Yeah. But, but then uh, you don't really know what the outcome is going to be. Yeah. And most of them seem to be blowouts by the away team, typically. Yep. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what Dylan does. Um, and, uh, yeah. Was it Aner last week that was game of the week? I wasn't. I was at Philly last oh, week, right. so the the week, the week before was week. Aner and that's what it was. That's what I'm thinking of, I was thinking of yeah, where you which were again on paper covering. looked really good, and then it was mm -hmm. just such a slow game. Yeah. And then last week was Irmo at Carolina oh, that's Forest. Oh, that's yes, was, yeah. yeah. And uh, Irmo wasn't they, it 55, like it was rough five or something. Like it was a low score. Well, 50. That was the game against Huff that they got shut out, and then mm -hmm. like I said, this game against uh, Irmo, um, who that was top five in the state so you know i mean carolina forest they i don't know <laughs> who made their schedule they'll be playing uh, i think ashley ridge this week um i was putting this this week's show and the following show together so some of the schedules uh the matchups are, mixing. are mixing up in my head but as i was looking at their schedule i mean the first five teams were all like in the top 25 and they're all have winning records and you're like good lord what were you doing to yourself but <laughs> Why did we do they this? were trying you know you sit and you put yourself up there with some of the best in the state yeah. hopefully come playoff time you know you can be competitive with them and you know props to them for for going out and trying an ori county team has yet to crack the south carolina media pool um top 10 
it's but I mean if like you said it's those teams that they're that they're competing against all across the state that make it really hard when their records are 0 3 because they just can't get a win against those top teams. Yeah, like I said, they'll figure it out once they start playing, you know, once you get into region play and you yeah. kind of figure out who they are. It's Myrtle Beach. We really don't know much about Myrtle Beach right now, but Mickey Wilson at the end of the day, he always finds a way to get his team to play and uh, and gets things rolling. Um, and like I said, but Loris, I think Loris is legit. Um, Ainer looks solid so far this year. Uh, again, Dylan, I think, is a very competitive. Marlboro County, I've had the chance oh, to watch County. them. Had the chance to watch them play against uh, Conway. And Conway is one of those teams where, you know, they're scrappy. They play really, really good defense. It's just the offense just isn't clicking yeah. quite there yet. Well, they won one game last mm -hmm. year, right? Yeah. And have they won it all this year yet? Mm -hmm. oh, they, they got have. one game. Oh, yeah. sick. Uh, so they're sitting at one and three right now. Um, but it's been fun. You know, we've been doing uh, the tailgates with Joe Weedro yeah. over at Maori News, and it's been fun to talk with him, you know, every Friday around 3.30, just getting people prepped for the games. And, and I give him credit. He said at the beginning of the season he really liked Loris, and, and thus far they have um, done what they've been expected to do. And, and even, uh, you know, a team like Mullins. Mullins has been a lot of fun. They're undefeated at 4-0. Uh, I was looking at their schedule in the last – three seasons alone to combine they won three games <laughs> so oh now in one season they've surpassed how many wins they've had in the last three seasons and uh last time they had any time any more than five wins was 2019 so do you Dang. know who's also won more games this season than they have in the last four years who's that georgetown county or oh, georgetown or jo georgetown georgetown, georgetown is sitting, at, week, sitting at two Did and they two really yes yeah, wow. two and two uh, Another shout out to Al Marcus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, this is the first time I think since I've been here that uh, multiple wins in a season. So I mean that's the beauty of high school sports, and you know every year is different. Um, you know there's always that opportunity of having that young player come up through your system. Mm -hmm. and you don't always have the you know recruiting aspect that you have in certain um, certain leagues. So, but I think we'll have. I think we'll have at least three teams competing for a state title at, at the end of it. So, and I think now that the season has started and we've started to see who um, who are our top performers, we'll get better at choosing game of the week. Like this game of the week is going to be pretty good. I, well, I have a good yeah. feeling yeah. about it. I think it'll get more exciting too yeah. now that we're going into region play and like, all right, we know how these teams did against each other last year and we're familiar mm -hmm. with how they are this year so far. So. Hopefully we get some exciting ones. Yeah. This week we got Dylan at Hartsville. Yep. Next week we're going to do uh, um, Mullins at Marion. And then the Love following it. week, uh, I was looking at the schedule, I think we're going to do uh, Dylan and Loris. So. Oh, that'll, that'll, be, that'll so be fun. That'll I mean, two be... extra games. I think, yeah, two extra games. I don't know if anyone's on a bye. But that'll so, still be really interesting to see. Yeah. So we got some really good opportunities out there um, to showcase uh, the talent that these kids have. I would ask though if we are at your game to score while we're there. Yeah. Yes, nothing's please. worse than like nothing happening, and then all of a sudden you leave, yeah, and then that was the, the game score. of the week two weeks ago. Yeah. I wanted to stay for one half because I was like, "This will be a high-scoring game. It'll be great." And then a, a, a touchdown was not scored until the last thirty seconds of the first half. Yeah, I was well, like, "You've got to be joking." What about last week? Was it Mullins at Lada? At yeah. Lada. 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 Sorry, still getting there. Six it nothing. was six nothing. Yeah. I thought Jeez. he was like I. So one of our reporters, Stephen Schlink, went out and shot that game. And when he gave in the final score, I was like, "Oh, is this is this a uh, the end of the half or end of the quarter? End of the quarter? He goes on to the final. I was like, "You're lying." Yeah. And the funny thing was, I think he underestimated how far it was to get to Lada, mm, and so he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go grab." lunch real quick or grab dinner and then I'm going to go well then I don't think he got there until later than he expected and so they had already scored oh that so that six was point. it that was it oh, so, so like he didn't... well that was it so oh, we no. were texting each other and he's like oh I have a highlight I'm like how do you have a highlight <laughs> no one scored. when no one scored and he's like oh I'll... I'm like bro no I said you need to interview that coach <laughs> yeah right now <laughs> and we then we'll something. use that and I will just talk over whatever video you have because yeah, I'm like, how the heck do you have a highlight? With... And there's a team running the ball. Yeah. They won't score. Here's another team. They're running the other way. They don't score. Here's a team. Here's the coach after the, the game. So. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's ha that happens with some of their games. You never know. And I remember I think Alan Marcus went and shot week one 
or week zero, sorry, at Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. And for the first half, which what he shot, yeah. um, not a single score, or it was like a very low scoring game at, at that. Yeah. And then as soon as he came back and started cutting stuff together, mm -hmm. the game popped off, and I think it ended up like 23, 19, or something like that. It always that. happens, like literally right when I'll be leaving, because I'm like, oh, I have enough stuff. All of a sudden, there'll be like a 98-yard <laughs> rushing mm -hmm. touchdown, and I can hear the stadium cheering behind me, but... I'm already walking out, and there's no way I'm going to be able to turn around in time yeah. and get that video. Yeah, nothing's worse than when you're walking back to your car, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, Yeah, you know, you're like, dang, your crap just drops. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was last week. I was at Loris and North Myrtle, and they, I think North Myrtle had just scored a touchdown, and or maybe they, they hadn't scored a touchdown. They were just, like, kicking, like, returning the ball. And so I was walking to the other end of the field, like, you know, like speed walking, and all of a sudden I hear the crowd go, and I look behind me, and this guy has a clear path. Mm -hmm. And he went for, I want to say 90 yards or 80 yards or whatever it was. I have to look at it. But, and so I have my camera and I'm lifting it up and I'm trying to press play, but it's zoomed all the way in. And so I'm zooming out and I'm like, oh, where is it? Where is it? And I catch the celebration. I'm like, okay, well, that's a highlight, I guess. He's celebrating. Mm. I never move to the other side of the field on that like kick return. I wait and yeah. I stand on that side and I film it just in case that happens. And then after when they're, you know, reorganizing mm -hmm. and switching special teams and everything, then I run very quickly to the other side where the offense <laughs> is going. Well, towards. I learned. Yes. That was yeah. my Don't like my immediately game. move. <laughs> yeah. Don't but, assume. Yeah. Because yep. also they might block the ball and yeah, take exactly. it. and Because that happened in a coastal game the last year. So. Yeah. Yeah, I learned. And uh, it was a really cool play. And, I mean, I got – some of them. <laughs> some of it. Yeah. The okay. celebration. But yeah. yeah, no, it's a it's a good season so far. I can't wait to see what el yeah. what else happens. But um, if anyone wants to check out some of the highlights of the things we were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, you can see that on our website wmbfnews.com under our sports tab. Maybe you uh, can go back and watch all the episodes so well, far, then. and uh, it's been a fun show so far this yeah. year. I yeah, it is. Trying to add a little bit more context and a little more depth into our analysis of the teams we've mm -hmm. had you on a few times <laughs> forgot the word end zone, end zone. <laughs> i will never i'm gonna get it tattooed on me somewhere just so i remember like right here <laughs> on right on my hand, hand you'll be like yeah he ran into the end zone, end zone. <laughs> this is actually where i put all my notes anytime i need to like pick something up if anyone's listening it's on my hand between my thumb and my finger i'm just like i write wow. cat food i'm gonna write end zone <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's been a lot of fun joining you guys. It's a great show, and you guys have been doing a lot of new things too, which yeah. has been really exciting. Yeah. yeah. But speaking of end zone, a team <laughs> that can't find the end zone the Panthers! Tele the Panthers! Television transition. Gosh. Yeah, the just... Panthers. They have yet to have a passing touchdown. They've had mm -hmm. one score with Bryce Young that. As he ran into the end zone and wasn't it like three might, yards too or yeah, something? Yeah, like about three yeah. yard rushing and uh, so far your top scorer is your kicker Eddie Pinheiro. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's not looking good. Uh, talking with a lot of Panther fans, they don't Do have much hope. Still? They they're out there. <laughs> well, I mean, ask Matt Bullock. He, that's he's true. our resident that's Panthers true. fan. Yeah, they do not look good. Uh, making the news to bench Bryce Young, which yep. you kind of question. Is it the right decision? Um, you know, as far as how much they gave up to get this quarterback, I yeah. think there's a lot. I mean, you gave up that other first round pick you could have had, which would have been the number one overall pick this year. Mm -hmm. um, you wonder what it does to his, you know, mental state. He's been in the league for two years and he's had three head coaches. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. Of, it's the organization. I think it starts yeah. at the top, and I think David Tepper is the worst owner in the league. I think that there needs to be someone He's that gonna end up on Tepper's hit list. I, <laughs> go He's for gonna it. pull up outside of WNBF um, and come in and complain like he did in that yeah, restaurant. Yeah, exactly. That was. But insane. yeah, the commissioner needs to step in in some way, shape, or yeah. form and get him to sell the team because yeah, it's just it's a mess over there, top to bottom. Whole organization. I think ticket sales. Are extremely low. I mean, they, you couldn't, you can't, even, you can't even give them away. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> so, oh, please I'm come to the game. We it's were free. actually go, like, my, um, my husband had asked last week, hey, he's like, hey, do you want to go to a Panthers game? Oh. And I was like, oh, because he went on a, a work trip right after. I was like, you know yeah. what? I would rather stay home with you than go to a Panthers game, like, because yeah. I would have to fly to Charlotte, 
go to the game, fly back the same night. That's more exhausting. I can just watch them lose on TV. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you got a team that you're rooting for and they're in town, you know, the yes. Browns played them a few yeah. a few mm-hmm. years ago. Like, oh, that would have been a fun Like, if they played the Bills, I'd be like, all right, I'll go see Yeah, Josh if it was Allen, a 49ers like, right, game, then. I would have done it. Yeah. Get a press pass at this point. Facts. Yeah. Just go stand They'd on probably the give those away. Yeah. yeah. They Although wouldn't Tepper even check. probably be like, hey, I heard about you talking about me I on that podcast. The podcast. No, I, don't be coming out. Yep, That's revoked. why he'd bring you down, and then he would like make a play somehow, or he makes someone make a play somehow that would like tackle you. Take me yeah. Out. Take exactly. you out. And then be like, oh, it's an Aim accident. for the cameraman over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just think that it's just a struggle for them. It's just going to continue to be a struggle. And going back to the quarterback situation, Allison and I were talking mm-hmm. about this earlier off the podcast, um, but I'll, I'll bring up my part first, yeah. and then you can bring up who talked about it for you. But Nick Saban on Hard Knocks, he mm-hmm. was talking about, and I think, did we talk about this on the podcast? Yeah, we brought it up about that yeah. first episode. He talked about the pressure. Right. And that. Which is like, Legit. I mean, yeah. these guys come out of college, especially Bryce Young coming as a as a Bama alum who had a ton of success there, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden just thrown into this specific organization, especially, yeah. and just all the pressure put on him is. I mean, it's insane for a twenty three year old quarterback or whatever he was yeah. when he came mm-hmm. to the Panthers. Yeah, I mean, you so. just wonder how much of his confidence is shot because yeah. I mean, you can sit there and blame the O line, but in terms of people that watched him, I mean, apparently the O-line played fairly well. They were giving him time, but instead of, you know, looking for his receivers, he was just going for the check down every single time. It was like 84 yards mm-hmm. and no touchdowns this past game. So. Well, and what we were, like I said, we were talking about, Tom Brady kind of had the same, uh, like echoed the same sentiment that yeah. Nick Saban had. Saban. Saban. Nick Saban. I've been saying everybody's name wrong today. <laughs> It's the Canadian. It's it, it, honestly, I went to Canada for a little while. I'm back, and all of a sudden, the Canadian comes out. Anyways, um, no, and, and Tom Brady, I was scrolling through social media, and there was a video he did an interview where he said that, honestly, um, like organizations kind of like the Panthers are killing young quarterbacks because, like you mentioned, the confidence. You're putting them in fresh out of college or fresh out of something else that isn't the NFL, and you are expecting them to be your star. Whereas years past, obviously in the Tom Brady era, there were quarterbacks like Tom Brady where you would have to be his third or fourth string or second or third string for years, learning the plays, learning the the ins and outs of the the organization, and then feeling confident enough to actually play. You throw someone like Bryce Young in who, of course, like he had confidence coming from Bama, but... It's kind of like, and I know we've talked about this, where Lenora Sellers coming from South Florence into the Gamecocks and kind of looking a little nervous. There's always going to be an adjustment. I don't care if you're in the same, in the best football um, organization in college football. It's never going to be the NFL. Yeah. And so like that's kind of just the sentiment that Tom Brady had like, if, like reiterated, um, kind of similar to Nick Saban. So yeah, even if you threw Tom Brady. On the Panthers right now. I'm <laughs> I mean, if you're yeah. picking, if you're picking number one overall, there is a reason. Mm-hmm. And you know, football, case in point, it is a team sport. You need an entire team. You can't just have one good player. Mm-hmm. You know, again, you could throw any star quarterback back there. It's not going to make a difference. You have to have talented wide receivers. You have to have a good offensive line blocking for you to make sure you have to have a run game. You know, you can't just lean on passing every single time. Yeah. You have to have a, you know, a quarterback that can, you know, make plays on the fly. You know, that was what Peyton Manning was really good at was the art of, you know, disguising plays and, and doing audibles. So, uh, you know, we'll see. It's got a long season ahead. Um, we'll see yep. what Andy Dalton does this week. And, uh, yeah. The dumpster fire continues. Yeah, I wrote on our rundown, NFL, Panthers suck, everyone's injured, and the league is a dumpster fire. (laughs) Because (laughs) I didn't know how else to describe it, and I knew we all had a lot to talk about with it when it came to the NFL anyways. Um, Speaking about everyone is injured, um, I actually printed out a list, and of course this list includes, um, like, uh, everybody who is, oh, don't look at my little... Don't cheat, cheat. cheat. He's cheating. No, I'm kidding. Um, I have three pages here. Obviously, anyone who is watching, you cannot read these. Oh, you have it organized by a position. Look at you go. Well, I mean, I didn't do it. I found it. Uh, um, copy. This page. is just week two injuries. People who were just injured in week two, including, and I asked my husband how to pronounce this, <laughs> Tua Tagoviola. Viloa. Viloa! Dang it! I was so close! 
I was looking directly at you, Ian, because I know you, you crush it every time, and I wanted to be impressed. Well, I um, mean, I think it's the question of two, if two is even going to be back on a football field again just after that injury and the way that he his body responded after, and then obviously the issue last year, where, again, mm-hmm. same thing, like, I'm no doctor, and I don't know if all the people on TikTok who claim to be doctors are doctors, but they're all pointing out just these little things that he's doing that have to do with those neuro aspects and about how damaged that he could potentially be. So, Yeah, well, and that's enough, right, because it's always the same injury for him, yeah. right? It's always a concussion, and we talk about CTE and, and the issues that – the long-term issues. And I know – I think it was – it's going to uh, – so I, I want to say it was the Raiders coach that they had asked. Yeah, yeah, he stood up and he basically said, I think Tua needs to retire. Mm -hmm. Um, But, I mean, look at him. Last year, he he was fine last year. He had no issues uh, after coming off the season before. It was a big talking point. Um, I think this is number four for him, possibly number five. They're saying he may have had one when he was in Alabama. But it doesn't sound like he has any interest in going anywhere, and it's his decision at the end of the day. So, you know, when you're making – 60 mil a year that's hard to turn down Mm -hmm. so you know you hope that he is smart about it and uh you know he'll have the four weeks now being put on the ir uh to make the decision of what he thinks is best for him and his family apparently his mom has said that she wanted him to step away last year yeah so um but it's hard you know you you have a dream you've made it uh, and you know now that you're there, you want to accomplish a goal, and you have a team like Miami who definitely, I think, could win a Super Bowl if they wanted to, and all the pieces, if they can stay healthy. Again, health is the hardest thing. And uh, But a lot of people say NFL stands for one thing, and that's not for long. So, I mean, the oh, average I've NFL, never heard that. That's hilarious. That's yeah, hilarious. The average yeah. NFL career is, you know, two and a half, three years. It can't years. all be Tom Brady's, unfortunately. Yeah. But – the uh, fantasy draft or the fantasy league busters are the uh, yes. uh, running backs and wide receivers that we lost this week. Uh, just going down the With road. Christian McCaffrey. So, well, that was week one. Oh, this is just this week is, that's two. What I'm saying. This is just week oh, two. People okay. who were just injured this week. Yeah. Um, you've got Isaiah Pacheco, Pacheco. Joe Mixon, Pacheco, 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 Isaiah or Joe Mixon, Cooper Cup, uh, Debo Samuel. I think he. Oh no, it says a couple weeks. Debo Samuel, A.J. Brown. Like, these are names that, like... I mean, these were all first-round picks for a lot yes. of people in fantasy. A.J. In our, Brown and... Yeah. And, like, when you have a 16-team league like we do... Yeah. You yeah, can't, so like... Many teams. Ian was... He was making fun of my team even before the injuries, but yeah, he was I just like, I looked at your team. It sucks. I was going to say, I think your <laughs> roster is this entire list. My roster is this entire <laughs> list. If you looked at my bench right now... Everybody is out. Everyone is listed as doubtful, questionable, out, or IR. They also drafted people that were already injured yes, I did. as well. <laughs> With I mean, the idea that I thought, well, no one's going to pick them, and if I'm only going to well, lose them. Well, there was them, a reason no one was going to pick no, them, because they're not coming back for another eight weeks. <laughs> I didn't realize the time. Like In my head, when we were doing the draft, I think it was like, what, August 31st or something, I was like, oh, that time will fly by no time. And then I think now I'm looking at them, it's like, oh, we'll return maybe oh, October 17th. I've 17. got A.J. Brown on my team. I oh, was like, do. hold on, do I have him? I do. I Worked do. out in my favor. I had That's Devontae sad. Smith. So. Um, oh, I have him on my other team. And that, I guess, kind of is the is the upside is because we have so many players, we had to pick a lot of like the backups. And because yeah. so many of these first-round picks for us were injured, now if you are lucky to have one of those backups, it works in your favor. But that's the fun of fantasy. You, know? you can't yeah. just draft your entire team and be like, oh, yeah, we're good. No, this is where, you know, separate the men from the boys well, and, the, and the girls from the ladies, yeah, whatever you want to say. You. And, you. Uh, you know, how, how are you going to work the waiver wire? How are you, who yeah. you going to pick up? And I got to look at you know? I've already declined my first trade. Oh. Um, oh, who was trying to trade with you, Brian? Brian. I was going to say, Brian's the only person I know that was. <laughs> so what was this trade offer? So to be clear, Brian needed a trade because Cooper Cup was on his team. Oh, boo hoo. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, if you looked at my team, boo hoo. You didn't need a trade. Real. And so he's like, um, he, I can't remember who he had given me, but all I remember is like the scoring, right? Like what, how ESPN fantasy scores them. Mm-hmm. And one of them was scored like a 64. One of them was like a 70 something. And he wanted, um, oh my gosh, who did one for me? Stefan Diggs. <laughs> Whoa. And I was like, I woke up and I was like, Whoa. respectfully, 
no. <laughs> and I decline. And I, I feel so bad when I reject offers. What? So, Don't feel bad. You're well, doing no. it for the good of your team. And that's the thing. I was like, if you look at my bench right now, there is nobody that I could replace him with. That like, Because he, granted, yes, he's not putting up the points that everyone thought he was going to, but he's still putting up decent points. I think he put up 23 before he was injured but he's not like oh yeah. last week mm-hmm. and so i he came in the next day and i was like brian i'm so sorry i had to decline it like that was that was a terrible trade <laughs> he's like no, horrible it, it wasn't that bad and i was like no 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 it's bad brian i don't know how he pulls off some of the trades that he does yeah. i mean and then, and then like in few years past like he was like the best team in our league and then he's pulling like I'm like, are you guys just like wanting to feed the beast? Like who who trades with the team that has the number one record in the league? I'm like, oh, it's like sometimes yeah. you're like, oh lord, who yep. are we playing with? So yeah. that was my first uh, trade decline so far. I have Good picked job. up like I've moved things around. Last year I was making trades out of the goodness of my heart. <laughs> oh, and that was my downfall because I I didn't want people to be mad if I didn't trade with them. Allison, I know. Deny, deny, deny. <laughs> I know it's bad, but I'll give you Xavier Leggett right here. I'll trade you Xavier Leggett for Justin Jefferson. No, absolutely no. So I just. How spit. about Diggs? You know, no, because. But I need a, I need a wide receiver. See, do you know he's, <laughs> I'm actually considering. I'm looking at you. No, I'm actually Allison, considering these things. Allison, I'm like, oh, but I like you. Put on the no. horse blind. Who cares? You don't like me. This is competition. This is why I didn't play sports as a kid. Genuinely, oh, probably, like, I could not. Um, yeah, I'm a. Yes, so everybody's hurt, and then. Um, now we're kind of going to see what our uh, leagues are. I mean, your team was kind of already. Well, I'm still, yeah, because I had uh, just gotten back from the Jacks State game when we did our draft, and I was just exhausted and just fell asleep on my couch and then woke up, you know, halfway through the draft and said, all right, well, you know what, I'm already, you know, messed up anyway, so I'm not going to try to fix this. Hence why I'm 0-2 in the work league. But, hey, in my other league, which I – paid more money to be in i'm in third in that one out I'm of one nine one of us in so. my other league but i'm, I'm undefeated in my other i was league. gonna say i think when i looked this morning i think you two are at the very, very bottom no i can't no, be I at think, the i think you guys are both dead last because Did Robert it's not only well we? it's not Hold just on. based off of the record of oh and two but they also then to <laughs> get a again. tie there's a there's points. a three-way tie for wait no one two three four there are five people no i know but correct see, do you but see now how it, you're at the very but it'll bottom? put you in order based off how uh, bad of scoring i'm not new very so the very me. second to bottom so who's the very last Robert. Robert. Oh, Robert. okay yeah. which is crazy because he had the number one overall pick which he took mccaffrey yes which i said originally if i had the number one pick you would have to pay me a million dollars to take McCaffrey because, again, he kind of has that injury bug. Mm -hmm. And literally within, he's out first week. But, yeah, and then he lost his second running back. Thanks. I will not be saying my team name. My team name is Ginger T News. Robert's is bye week, which is Yeah, his is bye week, which is funny. Um, But – I would like you to redact that. You said you're in dead last. No, I'm not. I'm I'm confidently tied for dead last. (laughs) (laughs) Oh gosh. So who's in first? You're in first. You need the trade more than I do. Ian's in first. Yeah. You know what? This is also my downside. Is I'll be like, you know what? I like all my players. I'm gonna keep them to the bitter end. Well, that's how I feel like if I I've have a player on my team that I like because they're on the Bills or whatever, but they suck in fantasy. I'm like, you know what? I still love heart. you. You're a Buffalo. Bill. I only draft with my heart. That's all I do. I draft with my brain, but I didn't with this one because auto picked What's it a brain? while I was asleep. Oh, gosh. I don't got one of those. I like my um, other team. Not the league is still a dumpster fire, though. Um, wow. And yeah. I'm starting to believe that the NFL is scripted. Um, <laughs> Always is. And Based off the uh, Super Bowl colors, usually. Whoever ends up. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's Although the that got joke. debunked it last got, year. Yeah, last year so. it didn't work out. Wasn't so. it purple and. Oh, who was in the Super Bowl? It year? was purple and red, yeah. right? Yeah, it got the debunked 49ers. last year yeah. for oh, like the last yeah, four yeah. or yeah. five years in a row. And then uh, Peter Schwartz over at NFL Network, he's picked like the last six or seven yeah. Super Bowl champions in a row. Wow. So he's picked he's picking the um, Kansas City Chiefs to three peat. So we'll see. Well that's why I wrote here. I was like the NFL was scripted, the Chiefs have an extra player on the field, the refs. <laughs> because the refs are making yeah. some obscene some calls those, in their yeah. favor. That Cincinnati game was tough. Yeah. And uh, there was questionable questionable calls. But uh at the end of the day, you know Football's football. The refs I'll game watch of interest. Too. Yeah. Um, speaking of football, guys, this week's trivia. I mean, speaking of football, that's all we've talked about we've this, entire, this entire podcast. But speaking of NFL, 
Um, this week's trivia is NFL trivia. But All again, right. so I have five players on my list here for trivia. Got it. Okay. Um, and they are current players. Current ish. You'll you'll understand. Ish. You, well, you'll understand. I'll I'll make sure you guys know where right. they currently are. Um, they are from South Carolina, somewhere okay. in South Carolina, and they play de- okay. I see what you're saying. in the NFL. Okay, so let's recall, in the real or fake college game, Tegan, you won. I did. So by Ian, one point. By half a by point. By half a half point. point, yes. <laughs> so this, is, this could be your comeback. Are you ready? I think it's going to be. Okay, um, this is very similar to our Olympic, um, who am I? So. Okay. You're going to win this thing. No, I wasn't on I, that one. Oh, yeah, you weren't. No, it was just, no. yeah. So we have the first player. Um, these are all, by the way, wide receivers. I don't know how that That's happened fun. to be. I wish we had, like, a word bank. Can we have a... No, no, trust me. You'll be fine. Uh, born January 29th, 2001, from Mullins, South Carolina. Oh. Gamecocks alum, picked last by the Carolina Panthers in the first round of this year's NFL draft. There you know, yeah. Yeah. Currently plays for the Carolina got, Panthers. Xavier Leggett. Yeah, Xavier Leggett. See, I know that there we one. go. Hold on. I'm getting my little thing out. T. I. I know this is probably getting. You can hear this in the mic. You can give us both a point. I know. I did. I did. Right. As soon as you said 2001 and then Mullins, I was like, all right. I was like, <laughs> no, I've got this one. The birthday thing sometimes throws. I know. I knew yeah. it threw you off last time, too. But um, I throw that in there so you can kind of guess like how long they've been in the league ish. Okay. Uh, born January 15th, 1996, from Inman, South Carolina. I apologize if I spelled that, I said that wrong. Gamecocks alum. He was the second round, a uh, second round pick in 2019 by the 49ers. Currently plays for the 49ers. Debo Samuel. What is your answer? I've got nothing. It's Debo Samuel. <laughs> See, I've only been here, you know, a little over a year, so I know the players that we talk about now. You might know, you might know a couple. <laughs> That's of them. about it. So, if you go from a different perspective of NFL, look, like looking at the NFL, you think you would know some of these names. Um, next one, born June sixth, nineteen ninety two, from Central South Carolina. He is a Clemson alum. Selected by the Titans in the first round of the 2013 NFL Draft. Previous teams include the Cards and the Texans. Currently plays for the Titans. Again, he's a wide DeAndre receiver. DeAndre Hopkins. Once again, man, nothing. It is DeAndre Hopkins. All right. Three for three. <laughs> he is three for three. Okay. This one actually, this one that I have next, really interesting. And when I looked up his name, um, there was actually a lot of news around his name, and I'll get to that after. Mm. Born December 21st, 1995, from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Okay. Whoa. He is a Clemson alum, was also listed as a punter for Clemson. He's a wide receiver currently. Um, Was a fifth round draft pick by the Raiders in 2019. His last and only team was the Raiders. Hunter Renfro. Currently yeah. a free agent, Hunter Renfro. <laughs> Sorry. I that one. That one I knew. Yeah, because I remember okay. we talked I, about him last year when the Raiders released him or whatever, right? Oh, yeah, we did. Yes. He actually went to Sockesty. Yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah. But I, I mean, like, he's from Myrtle Beach. Okay, yeah. you said, yeah. when you said Myrtle Beach alum, that was the one that was making me think. I'm like, oh, no, Clemson alum from Myrtle yeah. Beach. Yeah, from Myrtle yeah, Beach. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I almost Ooh. put Sockesty, but then I couldn't find all right. where the all others went to high school, and I was like, ah, yeah. just. But yeah, right. I thought that was really Rolling interesting. Through. And then now, because of the injuries of week two, a lot of people are writing like, well, you've got teams who need wide receivers. Yeah. You have a, a wide receiver who did really well, was just released for someone who was... Yeah, Hunter Renfro had a great career at Clemson and even in the NFL. I mean, it wasn't until Antonio Pierce came in and uh, just doesn't seem to have a, a game plan for him. He's kind of been yep. quiet the last two seasons, but then again, they, they really haven't had a quarterback um, so, yeah, I mean, if he can get on the right team with the right situation, mm-hmm. I mean, Browns, I'm always looking for a wide receiver. And he, <laughs> he kind of reminded me of, like, a Wes Welker, a Julian Edelman, that guy that kind of just was that go-to. Yeah. You know. Well, there's a lot of, obviously, speculation of people being like, oh, well, with all the injuries, here are the top five wide receivers that could be taking these spots. And yeah. he was yeah. only he was the only free agent that I noticed that was listed in any of these um, – yeah. Ooh. things so okay i did give tegan a point for anyone listening because i didn't I allow you the one. time to guess it um not the rest i genuinely had no idea 
Okay, our last one. We There's have, another one? This is the last one. Five, oh, okay. five for five. Let's can see Ian can go five see. for five? Um, Probably. We, okay, born April 7th, 1998, from Lada, South Carolina. Uh, went to Charleston, Charleston alum. Undrafted. Played for the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the CFL last year. Aww. Current team, which he hasn't actually played in a game. Bless, Bless you. you. Thank you. Which he hasn't actually played in a game yet, but is on the roster. <laughs> the Raiders. The Raiders. Where did he go to college? Charleston. Charleston from Lada. Charleston. Lada. Lada. I know. I said so I, I ca- catch myself. Undrafted. He did. Um, he was on the Broncos practice roster in 2022. How old is he? What's the math? Born in 1998. 98. 25 or 26? We have written a story about him recently on the WMF sports page. Hmm. He wants to go, he wants to go five for five nothing. so badly. I can't even try to, to pretend Charleston. that I could yes. find him in my head. Went to Charleston. Undrafted. If you give me the first name, will I give it away? Yes. Do you want me to give you his initials? Sure. First letter T, last name M. T M. T M. And he's on what team right now? Wildcats. No, I'm sorry, I had to say Wildcats. The Raiders. The Raiders. But he was on the Broncos practice squad. That was in 2022, before he played for the Tiger Cats, and the CFL had a great year. Wide receiver. Wide receiver. He was in. Like we wrote the story because he was a native to our DMA. Mm -hmm. And he made the final cut, like the final roster. Yeah. Was it 53 man roster? Yeah. 53. Are you looking it up? Maybe. Okay, but you can't. I'm not going to say it. I don't know okay. the answer. Do you, I could just show it I'm going it to on you. our website, but I, I want to look at the story. Oh, you want to see the story? I want to see okay. why we okay. talked about him. If you give me the first name, we'll give it away. You really Absolutely. Think? If you tell me the last name, we'll give it away. L- a little less, but it'll give it away. There's, um, it's not, he does not have a common name. I'm trying to think of other clues I can get him. Can you see? It? It's, it's, it'll be a, like, before the season started. Oh. Uh, keep going. I'll tell you when you get to it. Keep going. Keep going. You'll when you see his name, you'll know who it is. Ian we is trying write so many little, stories. I know. That's my job. That's week one. I'm gonna keep. Oh, wait, hit more. Hmm. Oh, right there. I would have never, ever, ever, ever it? gotten that in my entire life. I'm going to go ahead and Davious. a former PD standout will continue his pro journey in football journey in the NFL. I'm going to try giving mm. you other stats here. She, uh, you know what? You said College of Charleston, Latta. Huh. I phone a friend. Kyle, oh, do you think you know this? I should clarify. Sorry, I didn't clarify this. Mika- uh, la la la. <laughs> you almost just said his he was a name. He's now at University of Charleston in West Virginia, not South Carolina. I didn't even think about that because there's two Charlestons. Probably went to Charleston, West Virginia. Yes. Oh. I feel am like I, that does I'm not gonna, help. Do you think I'm going to get it? Is it a name that you? I don't. Th- it's. I've literally never heard of him in my life. But because right. he. I'm gonna. I'm tapping out. Oh, Tyreek McAllister. I would have never got. Really? It. No. I feel like because he played during your tenure at WMBF. I don't know. I don't think so. All right. Well, now yeah. we're going to be – we're we've been watching I him to see if he actually four plays. Four out of five. Four out of five. That's a pretty good score considering – I don't know how many people would have gotten that one. That last one was – I truly believe nope. that Michael Owens, our digital guy, would have gotten it because he well, wrote he that wrote story. Well, he wrote the story. <laughs> sure. But he's also – he's from the area too, right? Like I think yeah. he grew up in Dillon, so. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. He, he like, would have oh. gotten it. I had, still to, one. I had to throw a hard one in, but all right. I didn't all think right. that was going to be the hard one. I actually thought it was going to be um, Hunter, Hunter Renfro no, because that's... I wasn't sure if it was like because he's a free agent now. I wouldn't have known if we hadn't talked, talked about, about him last year. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, now the score is tied up one for you guys. Right. The season you're, continues. The season, you're really good, Ian, at NFL <laughs> so far. You're really good at deciphering. Real deciphering real, real versus fake. Oh, oh, a 50-50 coin flip. <laughs> That's fair. Okay, I'll give you that. What was the runner one? The turbo, turbo runner. Turbo runner. runner. I know, that I one was great. Chunk. Chuggers was the other one yes, that was fake. There were so many good ones. All right, well, that's it for this week. Um, wow. We will 
hopefully come back next week or next episode two weeks, yeah. two weeks with um some fun special guests to but i won't be yeah, here yeah tia won't be here because we're recording at a different time just from the standpoint of two teams that are 0 and 2, where do you see your record being by the time this podcast returns? By the time it returns, you know what? I think I'm gonna grab a win. I think with all the one injuries, three. yeah, I'll be one and three. I think no. I'll be. <laughs> Sorry, it's not math. No, no, I was gonna say I was gonna be one and three, but then I was like, no, no, I'm lying to myself. I'll be 0 and four. I think I'll grab a win. I think I'll I'll go one and two. Do you think you're gonna be handed right a loss? Now. Are you playing Al Marcus at all? I'm a week to week guy. Who am I? I don't even know who I'm playing. Next. If anyone's playing Al Marcus, you're bound to lose. It's week to week. <laughs> I played him week one, and I was like, no chance. And I played Brian last week. And you almost traded with him? No, after the game. After oh, the good Lord. We're done with this. Have a <laughs> good night, That's everyone. That's it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.